to see all of your still shining but kind of hungry faces here. So we're going to spend 10 minutes talking about what dashboards don't tell you when it comes to team performance and productivity. So as Mary nicely mentioned, my name is Laura Taco, like the snack. I am a VP of engineering and an engineering leadership coach. And through my coaching, I have the opportunity to get insight into dozens of organizations at a time. And one thing that engineering leaders often ask me is, how do I know if my team is productive or not? It's a great question, and often we turn to dashboards with metrics to tell us the answer. Now, these metrics tell us a lot of things. You might be tracking things like PRs, you might be looking at how many commits each individual developer is committing. You might be looking at things like door metrics or your SLAs. Meanwhile, your team might be telling you something completely different. They might be saying things like, oh gosh, we're moving so slow. You might also hear, hey, I think we move pretty fast. What's interesting about this slowness and this fastness is that these people are on the same team. Okay, they have the same metrics, but just an absolutely different perception of what that metric means for them. That's because performance and productivity are really, really complex. They're multidimensional and they have a lot of layers. And it turns out that self-perception of productivity is a lot more important than we think it is. Up until now, we have been living in this exclusive or world where we have been taught that objective, quantitative, automatically measured stuff is so much more important than how developers feel about their productivity. But the research about developer productivity recently in the last few years has actually shown us that's not true. We live in an and world. Isn't that nice? And self-reported data, self-perceptive metrics are just as important as those automa automatic measurements of activity. And in fact, putting them together gives you a much better idea and definition of what productive is. So self-perception matters a lot more than we think it does. Dashboards don't tell you this, though. They're just full of numbers and metrics that are taken from tools. There's not a lot of room for the opinions and the perception of your developers there. All right, quick poll. How many of you would like to work with a mandatory time tracker that keeps track of what tabs you have open and how often you're using which programs on your laptop while you're working? I see one hand. All right, yeah, no, that's gonna be a no from me. But what's so funny about this is I do this, I use this tool called Rescue Time, which some of you might use as well. Uh, it tracks what tab I have open, how long I'm in meetings. I find it very interesting to look at how I spend my time. But the point is that I make that decision for myself. It's not my company doing it for me because that sure feels an awful, like, uh, a lot, an awful lot like surveillance. Here's a tweet that is honestly one of my favorite tweets. It's not even a recent tweet, um, but I needed to include it here, and I'll read it for those of you who can't make it out. So it says, a friend's org at Big Co has decided to track these metrics to track IC productivity. Number of JIRA tickets closed, number of changes pushed, number of comments on code review. This might sound familiar to some of you. I predict a round of promotions for some very simple Python scripts. So we have surveillance on one side, but we also have uh, silly on the other side. And in fact, there's no way to lose credibility with your team faster than incentivizing and measuring absolutely the wrong things. This is in part due to Goodhart's law. And Goodhart's law tells us that when a measure becomes a target, it stops being a good measure. As humans, we are absolutely programmed to adapt our ways of working to maximize incentive. So if you're incentivizing the wrong thing, expect that people will shift their behavior or write some Python scripts to kind of game the system and skirt around it. But of course, we don't want this. We want people to look at these metrics that we're gathering and think, wow, I can do so much with this information. This is great. So how do we take our team and help them not feel like we're spying on them, 
but instead help them feel like we are empowering them with information. How can we get our team to go over to the green side? And this is where self-perception comes back in. Self-perception is very important, and it's more important than we think it is. Teams want to be consulted about their performance. They don't want to be simply informed about what's, what activities they're performing. So here's a graph uh, that comes from one of the out-of-the-box developer productivity tools. This looks really cool, I think. I mean, I like it. It's very colorful. Um, I can see things moving from left to right. But what this doesn't have is any opinion or self-perception from my team. It tells me stuff that they probably already know if I would just ask them. And it's really expensive, really expensive. So what dashboards don't tell you is self-perception, which matters a lot more than we think it does both the definition of what productivity is, as well as how, perceptive or how productive your engineers perceive themselves to be. It's also a key component of taking your team from that red, I feel like I'm being spied on area, over to the green, I feel very empowered by this information and I can make it actionable. Let's talk about vanity metrics, one of my favorite topics. So a vanity metric is any metric that just doesn't have meaning whatsoever. And the best way I can explain this is through an example. So up here we have a graph of pull request activity. The more blue you see, the more PRs. We can look at these peaks and make some assumptions. We can say, wow, that team probably had some really productive sprints. They got a lot done. But honestly, we don't know if they just wrote a bot that closed stale PRs. We can get equally as curious about these valleys too. It's not just the peaks we care about. So these valleys might be vacations or they might be weeks with a lot of meetings. It could also be that your team found a more efficient way to work that reduced the need for more PRs. We just don't know. So this is a great example of a vanity metric. Looks cool, it's nice to look at, but it doesn't really tell us any meaning. Compare this to when I overlay the same time scale, but with incidents. So suddenly those two peaks of pull request activity don't look so great anymore. Of course, correlation is not causation, so we don't know if the incidents cause the pull request or the pull request cause the incidents, but either way, we have a much richer story by adding this tension into our productivity graph. And that is exactly the way to prevent vanity metrics from creeping up in your own dashboards. Make sure you have some tension in your dashboards. So if you are measuring speed and activity and velocity on one side, you absolutely have to balance it with things like quality, reliability, satisfaction of your team, well-being on the other side. Otherwise, you just end up with a dashboard full of vanity metrics that don't really have any meaning. All right, our time here is already coming to a close. And you all, busy people, are going to go back to your desk after this conference is over. So what should you do? If you are looking at telemetry data from tools like GitHub and Linear and Jira as the source of developer productivity and performance, I want you just to change your mindset. It's one source of productivity metrics, not the only source. That's the first thing. The second thing to do is start with self-perception. So I think Ruhl uh, had a great point in an earlier talk about starting with a survey. It's fantastic. You can certainly do that. Take your team with you, survey them first, and then when you can find those areas of intervention, you can find metrics that work for them. I guarantee this saves you a ton of time and a ton of money because your developers already know where the problems are. Okay, if you're a team that's struggling with PR turnaround time, your developers feel that pain every day. You don't need a dashboard to tell you that. Just ask them. You might also have to take your executive team along with you. I know from my personal experience, I have been asked to produce one metric that matters, the one metric that tells me if my team is productive or not, as a request from my CEO. So I see some of you shaking your heads and laughing. Um, 
It is important that you use your role and your knowledge to educate your executive team or educate your board on why there is just not one metric that matters in the same way that we can look at revenue. It's just a false equivalency and that's gonna take a lot of effort. So what I can suggest is educating yourself. I've done a lot of research on this. Here are three papers that I recommend and I'll leave this up here so you can take a picture of it and just Google them later. I made sure that they're very Googleable. Um, Space productivity metrics is kind of the next generation of DORA metrics. So if you're familiar with DORA, I really recommend reading the space productivity metrics paper. It's actually from uh, Dr. Nicole Forsgren who led the research on DORA, also led the research on space productivity along with a, a great research team. There is one on automatically measured and self-reported productivity. And then this one on the bottom about misusing and abusing DORA metrics is fantastic. I love DORA metrics, but a lot of leaders see them as a checklist, and it can be very difficult to implement them responsibly. This is a lot of theory about productivity, and it can be really challenging to bring it down to earth level and implement it on your teams in a way that actually gets you the result that you want and is aligned to your team's goals. So you can find some expert help here. I have a workshop on this where I help you bring it down to earth and help you apply it to your teams. There's also a tool called DX, and I am not a person that takes recommending a tool lightly, but I really do wanna <laughs> to emphasize that I think this is a great one to start with. If you're curious about how self-perceptive metrics can help you track productivity over time. So unlike other tools, DX doesn't actually bring in metrics from GitHub or Jira. It's just about developer experience and it's all qualitative data. I think it's fantastic. I've seen it um, in the wild and I would recommend at least checking it out to see a different approach. When you start changing your definition of productivity and performance, I guarantee that your team will have better outcomes. You will reach your goals, your OKRs, whatever you're using to measure. Those results are impossible to ignore, but not just the business goals will change. You're gonna start hearing things like, I feel like I can do my best work on this team, or I feel like it's frictionless to develop here. And that is an achievement in and of itself. So remember to keep your dashboards with tension. If you're measuring speed on one hand, make sure to counter that with a measurement about quality and reliability. And then remember that we're living in an and world, not an or world. Make sure that you have self-perceptive metrics that balance out the telemetry data from tools like GitHub and Jira. Without this tension and without this balance, your whole dashboard is just gonna fall apart. It's been so great being with you. Uh, I would love to hear how you're doing, uh, what, what you're doing with developer productivity and how you measure it with your own team. So please come visit at office hours. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much.